Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we are here to talk about my birth story for my sweet little baby boy, Riker John. Okay guys, so this is obviously a very tender video. This is a very near and dear video to my heart and I'm very excited to talk to you guys about the details and the behind the scenes of my birth story. Now if you guys have not seen my birth vlog and my daughter Kaya meeting Riker for the first time, I will leave a link up here and I'll leave the links down below for you to check those out. They are the sweetest videos. I ugly cry every single time I watch them. I'm just so happy that I have those videos to keep those moments forever and ever. They're just very, very special videos to me and I know you guys will love them too. Okay. So, um, getting into my birth story, before I hop into it, I want to say thank you to all of the nurses and doctors and staff that helped us with the induction of our sweet little baby boy. It was an absolutely beautiful, incredible experience. It was a totally different experience compared to my daughter Kaya. Um, not saying that my first time was unenjoyable by any means, it was life changing, it was beautiful. It's just that this time my nurses really went above and beyond and made me feel like friend, like a friend or a family member and I just felt like I was in the best hands ever and I actually did have one of my friends as one of my recovery nurses. You know who you are. Thank you so much for taking such good care of me. All right, so this is actually the third time I'm recording this labor and delivery story for you guys. Um, I'm actually just re-recording the first 12 minutes of my of my um, story for you guys because the first time I recorded it I had like crazy hair second time I recorded it I was completely out of focus so hopefully third time is a charm okay so Saturday February 9th at 4 30 in the morning I woke up I was totally restless and I just could not get back to sleep my nerves were fried you guys just absolutely fried I was so excited I was so anxious I was so nervous now I was feeling nervous mostly just because I was afraid that they were going to bump me. I had heard a lot of horror stories of people being bumped from their will call induction dates, um, saying, oh, we don't have room for you this morning, but you know, maybe come back uh, later this afternoon or call us back this afternoon or call us back tomorrow. And I was so afraid that was gonna happen to me for some reason. And now somebody commented on the video and pointed this out, which um, I was expecting it, now, when I called in, they didn't even ask my name. In fact, when I checked into the birth center, they didn't even ask my name at the front desk. Um, they didn't ask my name until I was in my room and about to be admitted. So I'm assuming I was the only person on the induction schedule for the day. In fact, I can, I can almost guarantee you I was one of the only people for the day because when I was walking the labor and delivery halls, the rooms were completely empty. I was the only person on the floor, which was crazy because the day before that, my nurse told me they delivered 10 babies. So I knew it was crazy the day before, but yeah, it was really quiet that day when I was in there, you guys. Again, called in at 5.45 in the morning. I've been up since 4.30 and they finally gave me the green light and I was so excited. It's just, it's almost like Christmas morning. It's just one of the best moments. Like you know that you're having a baby that day I don't know how to explain it, but that, that is one thing that I enjoy about inductions is that you know it's going to be happening that day. Um, my daughter and now my son, both of them, I have had to be induced because I've gotten to 42 weeks and I just have these super placentas. So they say that my placenta just never gives off um, the oxytocin hormone to tell my body it's time to um, evict baby. So on the way to the hospital, I of course got Starbucks. <laughs> we were like five minutes late uh, to the hospital because I needed a coffee. So I got my sugar-free Frappuccino and I needed some bagel bites. I was freaking starving. So I needed my fill of fuel for the day and I felt much better after I got that food in my system. But um, yeah, Starbucks, I have a problem. If I look down, it's just because I'm looking at my notes here. I tried to be as detailed as possible for you guys. So I'm looking down, that's why. Okay, so right around eight or nine is when my nurse finally came in and admitted me, checked me in, introduced herself. I fell in love with her. Both of my labor delivery nurses that I had um, because I went over um, 12 hours. So I had two different nurses and I loved both of them. In fact, she 
um, our first nurse hung out in the room with us for most of the time. We just kind of chatted and we had a lot of fun um, getting to know her. And I feel like we're pals now. Same with my other nurse. I feel like we're like pals or family. They were just amazing. They were so cool. Um, and at this time is when the resident came in as well, introduced herself and the doctor came in shortly after that. During this time, I also got the IV. So before the doctor came in, um, it was right around the same time the resident came in, because I believe the resident was talking to me or she was checking me, something of the sort. Um, while that was happening, my nurse was putting my IV in, and that was like probably one of the like worst parts <laughs> of, of giving birth that day was the IV and of course the epidural, I'll get into that later. Um, but yeah, so the IV, she just said I had tough skin, which which I reminded my husband to never forget that, that I have tough skin. Finally, after I had my IV in and the resident had come and checked in with me, my doctor came in, absolutely loved him. Now, the way that my hospital works is just whoever is on staff that day, on call that day, that's who's going to deliver your baby. So it was not my OBGYN that I had seen throughout my pregnancies, but I absolutely loved this guy. He was very similar to my OB and had a very calm bedside manner, um, dry sense of humor. I really liked him, you guys, he was awesome. And he kind of talked through the induction method options that we had. And because I was a multiple pregnancy is what they called it, um, so this is my second pregnancy, and the fact that I was at 50% effacement and um, he was at a negative three, and I was two centimeters dilated. I was right on the edge of um, deciding to do the Foley bulb or doing something like Cytotech. We automatically said no to the Cervidil. The Cervidil is something that they use more so for like overnight um, cervix softening because it's a 12 hour pill. And Cytotech is done in four hour shift or like four hour increments from what I understand. And he said it might take two, three doses of the Cytotech really to get me at a good dilation. So like a three or a four. Um, now four, two or three sessions of that Cytotech would be like 12 hours. So we chose to go with the Foley bulb. Now there are two different kinds of Foley bulbs. Again, I don't know the medical terms. I just know there's two different kinds and one is really not comfortable. And then um, the one that I had is a little bit more um, gentle, if you will. And this Foley bulb, it was kind of shaped like this, just kind of like a clear, like bulbous looking thing and it had like a tube attached. And so they inserted that, filled it with like 30 or 40 cc's. I can't remember how much, but they just basically like inflate this little um, bulb. And once your cervix is dilated to about a three or a four, this bulb will fall out. So it's a manual dilation method. And honestly, it wasn't painful and um, wasn't really that uncomfortable. It was just, it's like kind of uncomfy, got like a little crampy. Um, I just, you could just tell that there's something in there. It wasn't that it was hurting me by any means. And every hour they'll like tug on that tube. And then as soon as you're at a three or four, like I said, um, it will fall out. And for me, that took about an hour and a half, two hours, and I was at a solid three. So they had placed the um, Foley bulb in and started the Pitocin at the same time, and that was all around 9 a.m. It took until about 11 a.m. for that Foley bulb to fall out. At 11 a.m., I was at a solid three, and with your Pitocin, they will kick that up every 30 minutes or so. Um, and I felt like I wasn't like feeling the effects of it right away. So I was like, oh, I think they need to be stronger. I think they need to be stronger. I'm not feeling them enough. So we did, we stayed on top of every 30 minutes and they went up by two every time. So I started at a two and they would go up by two every single time that they upped the Pitocin. And during this time, you can only have clear liquids. So I chose to get my fill of chicken broth, beef broth, ices. They let you have like blue raspberry ices. That was awesome. Um, Jello, sugar-free Jello, and then any kind of like clear juice you can have. You can't have orange juice, but you could have apple juice or grape juice. So I got my fill on all of those things. That was a very different experience versus my first time. My first labor, I couldn't have anything. I just remember ice chips and water was all I could have. Um, not even water, I don't think. I just had ice chips, but I can't remember. Um, but yeah, so that was a total different experience <laughs> having clear liquids. I sucked down who knows how many chicken bras and ices. It was absolutely incredible. Um, I bounced on the ball. 
was like the first thing that I did. I got up, bounced on the ball. Once the Foley ball fell out, I bounced a little bit more. At 12 o'clock, I was still sitting at about a three and um, I was at a 10. Oh, yep, I was at a 10 Pitocin level and the max is 20. So I was already halfway there. Like I said, I really didn't feel like I was feeling the, the effects of the Pitocin right away. I made sure that I stayed on top of that 30 minute um, segment and then all of a sudden I feel like all the contractions hit me at once. Um, I was getting them every two to three minutes and then they just got even stronger and stronger and stronger. So I decided at like 12.40 after they did one more kick up at 12.30, 12.35 with a Pitocin, decided to go on a walk around the halls and this is where you see my sister and my husband getting into the kitchen snack room, <laughs> which was awesome. They had this like kitchen, this like kitchen snack room for for your birth team helpers, anybody who is there. Besides you, you can't have anything that's in there. You can't have anything that's in there unless it's like a clear liquid. But um, they went through like a whole loaf of bread and they had tons of sherbet and ice cream and had their fill of all the yummy snacks that they had in that room. I really loved the fact that they had that room because I think it would just was something fun for my um, for my birth team to have um, while I was laboring. So when we went on that walk, I was still at a three, and I was in the back of my head. I was starting to get worried because um, it had already been just about four hours, and I still hadn't progressed past that three. But the doctor and my nurse seemed very confident that I was doing just fine. So I just I trusted them, um, and I knew. In the back of my head, I was also keeping in mind that my first labor, I went from a five to fully dilated really quickly within about an hour and a half, the same, same thing that happened this time. But at this point in time, I was feeling kind of nervous. I just had a huge fear of getting a C-section this time. For some reason, I just had it in my head that that was what was going to happen. We came back from the walk and then the last person of my birth team came in and that is my best friend Stacy. So I had my sister Kenna, my best friend Stacy, and my husband in the room with me um, to help me labor and um, to be there for the birth. My first time we just had my mom in there because it was her first grandchild and it was my first time giving birth and I just needed my mom in the room with me. So I was really grateful for my mom to be there for my first birth. But this time around, I'm really grateful that I had my best friend and my sister in there so that they were able to experience this whole process with me. It was incredible. They were exactly what I needed during that birthing process, during the laboring process. Um, just very calm and quiet and um, sent me very like, just like low key affirmations. It was, they were incredible. They were definitely my emotional rocks during this day and just like keeping me level headed. So. Thank you, you guys, you all did so awesome. Okay, so like I said, when I came back to the room, my best friend Stacy got there um, and I was still at a three. It was right around this time that the contractions really started to get intense for me and um, quite painful. I was still at a three until 3.30 p.m. Um, so, I, and I was really getting intense contractions and this time from 12.45 to 3.30, those contractions were still coming two to three minutes apart, um, but they were inconsistent. They were, the consistency was starting to pick up, um, but the intensity was what was really killing me. I had to take a little bit of Dilaudid um, in my IV to get me to rest just so I could nap for a little bit. I laid on my side. I was kind of able to talk to my birth team, was able to talk to everybody and um, calm down a little bit and then get through those really tough contractions. When I got the Dilaudid, I was at a 16 Pitocin level. Um, again, the max was 20, so I was pretty high up there um, as far as the Pitocin. And so I was really, um, I was feeling a lot of really intense contractions at that point. Did decide to avoid the epidural until I got to four centimeters. At 4.40 p.m., I finally got to a four. Once I got to a four, um, knowing my past, my nurse recommended that we go ahead, we order the epidural, and then see if the doctor um, was willing to break my water. So that is exactly what we did. Now my epidural was um, the most intense part, besides pushing, um, was the most intense part of my labor process. I um, was, I didn't feel like I was in enough pain at that point in time to get an epidural, but because I went so fast with my first, I did agree to get the, to get the epidural at four centimeters, and I had one of the best anesthesiologists on staff that day at that hospital, so I was really comfortable um, with getting the epidural 
um, from him at a four. I wanted to get it before they switched um, shifts. His shift ended at seven, so I wanted to make sure that I got it in with him. I made it known that I wanted the epidural to work this time because the epidural did not work the first time, um, and this time it did indeed work. Now, when I was getting it done, it was a little bit scary. Um, I bottomed out. Uh, my heart rate got pretty low and my blood pressure skyrocketed and then it plummeted and um, They brushed and that was right after they brushed my nerves and that was on the left side of my back And they, they sent what they called a zinger down my spine um, It was very painful now when I am in a lot of pain I get very silent and I just kind of silent cry or I kind of sob a little bit uh, That's just how I get through really painful situations. I don't scream I don't yell. I don't um, I typically don't flinch, um, but this sent like an electric jolt through my body and my whole body involuntarily just kind of wiggled. I had, <laughs> I had Stacy, Kenna, and Mike like all standing in front of me watching and Kenna and my husband at least said that that was probably the toughest part for them to watch too um, because I was in a lot of pain. They didn't watch the needle go in or anything, they were just watching my face and I got really pale, um, I was really out of it and I almost passed out and I just was crying. It was it was intense getting the, the epidural, but once I had it, I was very grateful for that epidural. Um, it did make me more numb on one side than the other, which is super common. Um, they just kind of tilt you to the side um, that it's less numb on so that it can kind of trickle so gravity can do its work and trickle onto that side. And that did really help. <laughs> my, my left leg was so numb. I called it my ham leg when I was pushing <laughs> and it was like super numb. But in my right leg, I could feel a little bit. I could still move it versus my left leg. It was really hard to move. I basically could not move it. Um, but it did work. I didn't feel the contractions. I didn't feel anything on the inside. And I didn't have to um, get any kind of like boost of the epidural until I was ready to push. But more on that in a little bit. Okay, so right after I got my epidural placed, um, I did get some Zofran just to kind of cut that nausea a little bit. I was super nauseated. So that helped a ton. I didn't throw up at all this um, labor, which was really nice versus like my first one. Oh my gosh, I vomited so much my first labor, which is completely normal, but it was just this time if I were to have a birth plan, if I said I had a birth plan, that was like one of the only things in my quote unquote birth plan um, that I wanted was to avoid throwing up as much as possible and I wanted the epidural to work. <laughs> Those were my only two things that I wanted for my birth plan that day. Um, and I got both those things. So my epidural worked and I avoided throwing up. So I had a little bit of nausea, but it wasn't a big deal. So finally it was like 7.30, 8 o'clock, the doctor came in, he broke my water and the resident tried to break my water first, but she couldn't quite get it. So he came in, he broke my water immediately upon breaking my water. I was at a five. Um, he was still at a negative three station at this point. So he was still pretty high up. So we needed to um, get him to wiggle down put the peanut ball between my legs and we were just kind of flipping me back and forth. And honestly, so much amniotic fluid, you guys, so much. My nurses were commenting on how much amniotic fluid was coming out every time I laughed or every time I like tried to sit up a little bit or change, change position. It's normal for a little bits of the amniotic fluid to like continue to come out, but I was having like lakes and lakes of amniotic fluid continue to pour out. And it was like, it was crazy. There was one time where I'd rolled over and I'd completely soaked the, the entire side of my, um, of my delivery gown or my hospital gown. It was completely soaked. So just so much water. I remember like the feeling of like sitting up and just like gushes. And then I would even like try to like, like push a little bit and I could feel all this fluid coming out and I'm thinking in my head I said I need to get this fluid out so this kid can work its way down I'm like holy cow so finally the, the the leaking stopped for the most part and I have been flipping back and forth and back and forth at 9 35 p.m. my nurse checked me again and said nope you're still at a five um, let's sit you up and um, try to get some pressure on your cervix um, but he was at a negative one at this time. So we did successfully wiggle him down by doing that with the peanut ball. And um, once he was at a negative one and I put pressure on my cervix, 
I remember this is where it went so fast, you guys. This That was at 9.35 that she had checked me. I had to double check to make sure that this was correct. And indeed it was. 9.35, checked me, I was at a five, sat me up, and then Mike's sister, my husband's sister came to bring him some food because he was starving and I couldn't stand the smell. I remember not being able to stand the smell of the french fries, so I'd ask them to leave the room to eat their food and that was at like 10 15 and directly like right after that i started to feel a really intense like burning sensation on the right side of my pubic bone and i was shaking uncontrollably i had been for like the past hour before this too so i knew i was getting close i knew i was in transition um, because of all of the hormone shakes but my nurse said you know what i bet you you're complete let's check you and it really caught me off guard and at this time too, they told me I had a button. I didn't know I had a button for my epidural, so that would have been nice to know, but um, it wasn't until that point that I was feeling any additional pain anyways. So I'm like pushing this button over and over again, and my nurse is like, eh, it doesn't work in credit, honey. <laughs> you can't just keep pushing it and get all of it at once. It just comes like once every 15 minutes. So I'm pushing this button, I'm in so much pain, she checks me, at an eight or a nine and let me have one more contraction. And I said, okay, I feel like I need to push. I have a really intense pain down there. And she said, I bet you you're complete. Checks me, sure enough. So that first time when she checked me and I was at an eight or a nine, um, and I literally had just sent my husband out in the hallway to eat his food, um, my best friend Stacy looks at me and I was like, you need to go get Mike. So she goes on the hall, tells Mike, hey, it's time to come in. She's at an eight or a nine. Um, we're getting pretty close and then like I said I had one more contraction so it was like two or three minutes and I was um, at a nine I had just like a little bit of cervix left um, which they honestly just had me practice push through the rest of that um, cervix that was left but anyway so she said yeah it's time to push because I felt that urge needed to push um, so, so I sent Stacy back out in the hallway to go get my husband and she's like yeah uh, it's time it's time for you to come in <laughs> so my husband came back in and this is part of the birth vlog where you can see them all goofing around and like it's time it's time for the baby to come and i was in so much pain at this point um now when i say so much pain i wanted my epidural to work but you guys i didn't want it to work that well um i didn't want it to like overwork and be overly numb so it was just the right amount of epidural for me I expected to feel pain, I was having a baby, so I wasn't like upset or caught off guard that I was feeling um, feeling pain at this point, but I was trying to push the button to try to get the pain to come down a little, but I could feel the urge to push and I could feel the intense pressure and there was like a little bit of like burning, uncomfortable, like almost like a bruising sensation. I don't know how to explain it, but um, I did feel just enough. Again, that was at 10.15, my husband comes in and by 10.40 p.m., little Riker John was born. It did not take very long for him to come out. Um, the doctor was joking as he came in. <laughs> he said, I typically like to have my gloves on when I deliver, so. <laughs> Again, I went really quickly, just like my first labor. I went from a five to him being out within an, within an hour. Um, I thought it was an hour and a half, but yeah, 9.35 is when she checked me and 10.40 is when I delivered him, so. Like an hour later, he was he was born. I remember I was pushing too, and I believe it was like 16, 17 minutes of pushing. It wasn't very long. Um, and so I pushed like two or three times per contraction, and they had me not push for a little bit. They had me hold off until the doctor got there, and that was like the last 10 minutes of me pushing. Um, but yeah, I only had one practice push to get past the rest of the cervix, and then she had called the rest of the um, staff to come in so, and, and when I was pushing he was like really reassuring he's like that's a good push Morgan good push and it was very quiet it wasn't nobody's yelling at me to push just everybody was very quiet and reassuring there was nobody counting to 10 they just told me when to start and to stop pushing it was a really enjoyable experience and I could feel my contractions at this point I could feel when I needed to push and the most intense pain was at the very end when I was he was like literally about to come out and um, I had to wait for the next contraction before I could finish pushing him out. That was really intense. You can see in the birth vlog too that I'm clenching my teeth and I'm crying a little bit. Um, I was also crying, I was so excited. I couldn't believe that I was finally gonna be able to meet my baby boy. There's so many feelings that you feel during that point in time when your baby's about to come out. I just, 
it's the most incredible experience. So now, um, when he was about to be born, I did not know this when I was pushing, but my nurse made me aware afterwards that when he started to come out, when his head was crowning, they saw that he was starting to turn. Now, if you listen in my birth vlog, there's a clip where you can hear me say his heart rate is dropping uh, with every contraction. Now, the nurse had told me at that time that it was normal, it just meant that he was getting squished coming down the birth canal, but in reality, actually it was because the cord was wrapped around his neck and as he was starting to turn, it was tightening and tightening even more so. Um, so on my last contraction, they really had to pull him out um, and get him out of there and get that cord off of him. So, and I remember um, afterwards, Stacy and my husband overheard the doctor. They kind of, the doctor and the nurse kind of had this like uh, low key conversation, looked at each other and said, yeah, you might want to get that ready just in case. And I don't know if, what he was referring to, if it was like an emergency team or if it was like a vacuum or something like that. But um, yeah, it was kind of an intense situation. <laughs> but he made it out when he was first born. You can see that he had a little bump on his head and that went away in like 15 minutes. And that's just because he got caught on my pubic bone and the doctor like squished his little head like really forcefully had to like get him out of there my last um, couple pushes. So he had, was born with that little bump, but like I said, it went away in the first 15 minutes. And at 10.40 p.m. on Saturday, February 9th, our little baby boy Riker John was born at seven pounds, 10 ounces, and 20 and three quarter inches long. I know in all my announcements I put 21 inches just because I didn't have like a fraction symbol, and so we, we rounded up. And a conundrum on his birth weight. So at 24 hours old, he was actually weighed again, and he was eight pounds, three ounces. Now, this is unheard of for like a seven percent weight gain, usually. Usually babies lose about three to five to seven percent of their birth weight within the first 24 hours from what I understand, but gaining is just unheard of. So I guess we'll find out at his two week appointment which one was more accurate, the seven pounds, 10 ounces, or if he was like an eight and a half pound baby. I don't know, I guess we'll find out. But that's what he was weighed at in my footage and that is what we are going off of for now. He seems like a much smaller baby to me than my daughter Kaya, who is nine pounds, two ounces. So honestly, I do, I believe it. That first hour was kind of intense too after he was born. I think that his head just kind of hurt on him a little bit. Um, he was just in a little bit of pain. Um, it was really intense. We had nurses coming in and out and checking his vitals and we had a lactation consultant come in and everybody just said he was doing beautifully. His latch was perfect. His head seemed nice and round. Um, that bump went away right away. And um, yeah, he just seemed perfect. He just was really angry and probably in a little bit of pain from coming out so fast. But um, but yeah, so finally right around 2.30 in the morning, Mike and I were able to get him to calm down enough so we could sleep in our recovery room. They played the little lullaby on our way over to the room. He cried the entire way. But um, I was ecstatic. I was over the moon. I was so happy that we finally had our baby boy. And he is just a mini Mike. He is my round face shape, but he looks exactly like my husband Mike. Um, one last tidbit I wanted to add. So um, when I was pushing, I remember the doctors and the nurses all saying, did you reapply your makeup right before you started pushing? And I'm like, no, no. And the doctor's like, oh my goodness, like you look, you look, you look even better than my wife did when she was having our babies. And I just remember thinking, I was like, oh, that's really nice. It's like the weirdest compliment to be getting like as you're pushing a baby out, like how good you're looking. So. I, uh, yeah, that was strange, but it was, uh, it was kind of a nice compliment when I'm feeling like, you know what. <laughs> All right, you guys, well, that is going to wrap up my labor and delivery story, my birth story of my baby boy, Riker John. I, oh, I'm choking up a little bit here. I just had the most incredible experience. Again, thank you so much to the nurses and the doctors that were on staff that day. We had the most incredible experience and to our recovery nurses as well. You guys really just, you made it such an amazing experience. And the new birth center, the birth center that we went to is just incredible. I just felt like I was in a spa. I had massages every day when I, when I was in postpartum recovery. Just an absolute dream. Oh yeah, that's right. And before I got moved to my postpartum room, I mowed a piece of French toast, bacon, hash browns, 
and a breakfast burrito. Guys, I was really hungry. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I would love if you join my little family here. Leave a comment down below with your guys' birth stories, labor delivery stories, and your favorite parts of the birth vlog. Again, like I ugly cry every time I watch them. They're the most beautiful videos I've ever made. And of course I'm biased, but I think that they are just incredible, incredible moments that I'm going to have forever and ever, and I'm going to start crying again. Thanks again so much for tuning into today's video, and I will see you guys on Thursday for my one week postpartum update. Okay, bye guys. You wanna see the baby? He's got angry spots. Angry spots from breastfeeding. Six days old. Okay, okay, say bye guys. <laughs> bye guys. Myself. What a wonderful world. What a wonderful world.